Most people understand that your hydration level is important for several bodily functions, but one of the overlooked areas as it relates to hydration is pelvic floor function. So today we're going to take a look at how being dehydrated can affect your pelvic floor function. There are five main ways that dehydration can cause pelvic floor issues. The first relates to muscle function itself. So pelvic floor muscles are muscles like anywhere else in our body, and they require adequate hydration to work optimally. If we are dehydrated, our electrolytes get off, and that can end up causing dysfunction in the pelvic floor, and it can end up being more tense than it's supposed to be, not contracting and relaxing well because the electrolyte balance is off, and this can end up showing up as various different pelvic floor dysfunctions like pelvic pain, urgency, frequency, bladder issues, you name it. The third way that dehydration contributes to pelvic floor issues is how dehydration can impact our connective tissue. So again, we have connective tissue throughout our entire body, but in the pelvic area, the connective tissue, the, the fascia, the ligaments that help to support the bony pelvis and help to support the pelvic organs, if those tissues get dehydrated because we're not taking in enough fluid, uh, they're not as supportive. So they can end up being more brittle and less elastic, um, less ability to absorb force. And this can, over time, lead to support issues. Um, so as it relates to the pelvic floor, it can relate to, it can end up causing uh, pelvic organ prolapse issues. And that's where the pelvic organs start to tip into the vaginal canal and descend down, causing heaviness, pressure, and a whole host of other symptoms. So when our tissues aren't properly hydrated, the connective tissue might lose some of its ability to create proper support. Fourth on the list for how dehydration affects our pelvic region is the fact that when we are dehydrated, we are at a greater risk for developing urinary tract infections. So when we're dehydrated, our urine becomes more concentrated and a concentrated urine can potentially lead to urinary tract infections and these can become chronic over time or happen regularly, um, especially if we kind of keep that hydration level lower, which a lot of people who are dealing with pelvic issues, unfortunately, tend to drink less, putting them in that dehydrated situation, which becomes this vicious circle that you're more at risk for developing chronic UTI-like symptoms. The fifth way that dehydration affects pelvic function is its effect on overall digestive health. So if we are dehydrated, that can tend to lead to constipation. And constipation can lead to extra pressure on the bladder and on our pelvic floor muscles, and especially when we're having to do increased straining and pushing to evacuate the bowel movements. Over time, this can lead to other further support issues or pelvic pain issues if not dealt with. So now that we've talked about all of the issues related to dehydration in your pelvic floor, what are some simple things that you can do to help avoid dehydration? Probably the most simple is keep water with you throughout the day so that you're taking in an adequate amount of fluid. Now, when you're drinking fluid, you wanna make sure that you are avoiding fluid that has a dehydrating effect. So that means avoiding caffeinated things or alcohol because these can all have a dehydrating effect. Other ways that you can incorporate um, more fluid into your day is eating hydrating foods like fruits and vegetables that are chocked full of water um, so that your food as well as your fluid is helping you to hydrate your body. Other things you can do is to monitor your color of your urine to make sure that it is an appropriate color throughout the day. So our first <clears throat> pee of the day should be a brighter yellow, and then every pee after that should be a pale yellow. So if your pee is staying bright or a dark yellow, that means that you need to take in more fluid throughout the day. And if you're peeing clear, that actually means that you can decrease your fluid amount. Now, if you're doing all these things and you're still dealing with pelvic issues or you just want some help to try and figure out your pelvic health issues, the last thing that she can do is partner with a pelvic physical therapist to evaluate what's going on in your pelvic floor and seeing if your fluid intake is contributing to issues that you might have so that we can come up with an individual plan so that you can be pelvic symptom free and live your healthy active life without having to worry about pelvic health issues. Thank you for watching our video. We hope you found it informative. We put out weekly content on pelvic health topics 
because we want people to be able to optimize their pelvic health throughout their lifetime. Make sure you like and subscribe our channel so that you're alerted when our next video becomes available.